In this presentation we are going to look at control limits for control charts and essentially this question involves a little bit of arithmetic. So what we're going to do here is, okay, a normally distributed quality characteristic is monitored through the use of control charts. Uh, these questions have the following parameters, all, question, all charts are in control. So we're given details for the upper control limit, uh, the lower control limit and the center line for two charts, the X bar chart and the R chart. Sorry, just as a digression, this is question 39 in one sort of set of review questions, but it might be a different question in a different set of new review questions. So don't worry about the question number there. Anyway, going back to the question. Uh, so we're given the details about the where the upper and lower control limit are. So let's just have a look at that. That's, I'm going to talk about that in a second. So essentially it's uh, the position of each of these, okay, each of these lines. Uh, the upper control limit, the center line, and the lower control limit. So the control limit, UCL and LCR, LC, uh, LCL are the control limits, but the CL means it's the center line itself, or the mean of the ranges, or mean of the standard deviations, or so on. Uh, okay, also what you would do here is, I have a wrote out a couple of these formula here. So this is uh, how you can compute the control limits uh, now the control limits only uh, x double bar plus or minus three times s bar over c4 divided by the square root of n process range is r bar d3 times r bar d4 okay and the process standard deviation is s bar okay that's I should uh, make that clear it's s bar which is the mean of the standard deviations for each batch okay plus 3 times c5 over s bar over c4 okay now essentially what you're getting is a, each, a, a little batch and you're taking some measurements and getting the mean of that of those measurements the range of those measurements or the standard deviation of those range uh, uh, measurements uh, but essentially what you've got to do is actually have a cons very consistent batch size each time okay so the first question uh, here is what sample size is being used for this analysis as as if to say what's the average, uh, what's the size for each batch that you're measuring okay uh so uh what we got how do we do this so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to look at the r bar r chart there zero uh for the lower control limit 8.236 for the center line and the UCL, the upper control limit, is 18.795. So we're going to use that. Okay, so I'm just going to pause this a second and just write that out here. So I just uh, got started there. So what we're told in the question, uh, not very explicitly, but what we're told is the mean of R bar is 8.236. Let's just have a quick look at that. So just right there. 8.236 that's r bar and this is r bar d3 and r bar d4 okay so r bar d3 as it turns out is equal to 0 okay and that means d3 is equal to 0 that, that actually would sort of serve as a big hint very soon okay now similarly r bar d4 is equal to this is the upper control limit okay and but if we divide r bar d4 by r bar we just isolate d4 okay so that's 18.795 divided by 8.236 and that works out to be 2.282 okay so well and good we know what r bar d3 is or sorry d3 and d4 is but let's consider this or let's have a look at this okay so what i'm going to do here is well there it is there actually so I'm gonna actually just make this a little bit bigger and uh, easier to read but essentially what we got to do is there we go no it's not uh, not being massively expanded essentially what I'm gonna do is pick out this line here okay and we notice that uh, D3 is 0 and D4 is 2.282 so essentially what we know is this is that the uh the batch size or the sample size is four okay that's the important thing there the sample size is four okay so that means what we're going to do is use this entire line that I've just underlined here from now on okay that's important okay so I'm just gonna unmask that so there we go 
C4 is going to be 0.9213, C5 is going to be 0.3889, and so on. Um, yeah, anyway, so the question is, what is the batch size? So you're actually able to figure it out by uh, computing D3 and D4 and seeing what si batch size that would uh, equate to. So you start off there at the X chart measurements, okay? Now, the next question. Uh, estimate the mean of the standard deviations S bar for this process. Hmm. So we've used up the X bar, X, oh, sorry, we've used up the R chart, really, is we got as much information out of, this, of that as we could. But there's the X bar measurements, okay. So let's have a look at this. And what I'm going to do is go back here a second. And first off, let's uh, be mindful of this here, this set of measurements here, or sorry, this set. Uh, equation here x double bar x uh, bar x double bar plus or minus three times uh, s bar over c4 by the square root of n in case that and now that's going to be know that n is 4 from now on so that's going to be something like 2 okay also what we know is now this is for the x bar chart only now is that this is 626 this is 620 and this is 614 okay So what does that mean? It means that there is a difference of 6 here and a difference of 6 here. Okay. So why is that important? Well, let's go back here. That means that this bit is equal to 6. Okay. Uh, X double bar is 620 plus or minus 6. 620 plus or minus 6 gives you 614 and 626. Okay? So, what we're going to do here is use that bit and figure out what S bar is, okay, from that. So, I'm just going to pause this and set this up. So, there we go. Uh, 6 is equal to 3 over S bar divided by C4 over the square root of n. Now, remember, square root of n here is 2, okay? You can have a negative batch size, so it's going to be n is going to be four. Square root of n is going to be two. It doesn't actually matter either way, anyway. So uh, C four is something we get from the tables. So remember that. So we just go along where the batch size is n, okay, and just go to the C four column, which is the first column, not point nine two one three, okay. So. 6 is equal to 3 over s bar, which we don't know, times 0 0.9213 times 2. Or, in other words, a little bit of calculation work. 2, or I'll just keep it simple, we'll just cross multiply. 6 divided by 3 times 0 0.9213 times 2 equals s bar. Sorry, that's a 2 there, sorry. Okay, and it's a simple calculation. I'm just going to do it now on my calculator. I've just unpaused there now. So it's S bar equals 3.6852. Okay. Uh, okay. By the way, that's I'm just using a sort of calculator that works at four decimal places. That Four decimal places is about right. Okay, seeing as we're working, the seeing as this, uh, the control limits were, are given to four decimal places, four decimal places is okay. So that is the S bar, or S bar, which is the mean of the standard deviations for the batches. Okay, compute the control limits for the sta uh, process standard deviation chart, the S chart. Okay, so we're just gonna go back here for a second and have a quick look at those. Okay. So they're down here at the bottom. So it's S bar plus or minus 3 times uh, C5 times S bar over C4. Okay. Well, that is 3.6852 plus or minus 3 times. So put this in in brackets here just to make it a little bit easier to read. Uh, C5. Well, we know what C4 is. It's not 0.9213. 
Uh, C5 is we have to go to our control limits, our, our correction factors. There we have it there, 0 0.3889. It's this one here, okay? C5 for batch size 4, 0 0.3889. Uh, times uh, uh, S bar is again 3.6852 okay so again a little bit of number crunching and if you just bear with me this works out to be 3.6852 plus or minus uh, 4.6668 okay so when you uh, work that out a little bit more, what do you get? You would get uh, four, uh, three point six eight five two minus not or four point six 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 eight. Uh, that would work out to be minus not nine eight one six. Okay. If you add them, uh, 3.6852 plus 4.66666, you would get uh, 8.352. Now, this is the important bit. You cannot have a negative standard deviation, so what you do is replace the lower value with zero, okay? That is absolute killer. Do not have negative standard deviations. If you get a negative standard deviation, all you all you have to do is replace it with zero. That's all. You don't have to give any explanations. Well, you can give us a quick explanation. Negative standard deviation replaced with zero. So you, the, whoever is look at correcting it would know exactly what you're talking about. But never uh, finish with it in your exam. Negative standard deviations. Just never. Okay, so that is that one done.